Hey, Victor, here's a really interesting question. We've gotten this a lot from immersion teachers. And immersion teachers will sometimes say, I don't think STAMP is really appropriate for immersion kids because there's all these different things we do in immersion programs that don't get tested in STAMP. So what would you say to that, that kind of teacher who has that kind of question or that kind of doubt? That's, that's a very good question. Yeah. I think the most important thing is to understand what are you valuing in your immersion program, mm -hmm. right? Because in STEM, we're measuring real-world proficiency in the language. Right. Is the ability to communicate with others in the target language in unrehearsed situations something that you value in your immersion program? Mm -hmm. well, personally, I think every immersion program mm -hmm. should have that goal in mind as well, right? Mm -hmm. You focus on content, you want kids to be exposed to biology, mathematics, chemistry, in English plus the other language, right. but at the end of the day you also want them to be fluent speakers who can participate in that community in that language. So STAMP is a great, is a great assessment, it's a great opportunity for them to measure that part of what is valued in an immersion program. Okay, but let me play the devil's advocate a little bit here. So this kid may be able to talk for hours about biology, you know, frogs and all this kind of stuff, and we don't ask about frogs. So there's this whole set of abilities a kid has that isn't being brought out in the stamp test. Is that fair? Well, you have to think you can't have one size fits all. We go back to the same topic. You can't yeah. have a test that's going to measure everything. Mm -hmm. Whenever you try to do one thing that is good for everybody, you're going to end up not doing it so well. Mm -hmm. We want to measure proficiency really well. If you're interested in measuring math ability, bi biology ability, mm -hmm. there are other tests that can do a much better job of focusing in on that specific subject mm -hmm. that will not be stamped. But if you're interested in proficiency, then stamp is a very good opportunity. We should talk as well about bias, right? Yeah, yeah. So what is bias? <laughs> well, bias can come from all sorts of different sources, but I think the one that's really relevant in immersion programs is if you had, say, a number of items about biology, let's just say about frogs and how they go from eggs to tadpoles to frogs and then they reproduce and so forth, and then a kid who either didn't have that curriculum or did have that curriculum and was just bad at biology, he might be really good in Chinese or Spanish, but he forgot all about frogs, or he forgot the word for tadpole. Yes. Then, inadvertently, we're measuring that kid's knowledge of biology, not that kid's proficiency in the language, and which is our job, right? So now we're flipping the table. Now it's yeah. going to be unfair to that student who's a That's fluent right. speaker in the That's language, right. But for some reason, he doesn't need to be talking about frogs every right, day right, in the real world, right. right? And what I loved about what you said before, right, there's all sorts of other tests that can measure content knowledge and so forth. So the teacher has to think, okay, what does my assessment system look like? Well, I had the kids give uh, presentations on whatever, biology, social studies, whatever. And I graded that and I had a rubric and I said that, that it was well organized, he showed his knowledge of biology or geography, whatever the topic was. So when you get a stamp score, let's say the kid who got straight A's on all his presentations, all his essays, all that kind of stuff, doesn't do so well on stamp. Well, that doesn't mean the kid's a bad student necessarily. It means they've got really good content knowledge, they're really good at preparing yeah. And then, but their weakness is in that extemporaneous, unrehearsed situation, they struggle a little bit. Yeah. And you might get the opposite, right? You might get kids who don't do so well on the presentation or the essay or something, but they do really well on stamp because they've got friends who speak Chinese with them, or maybe they speak Chinese at home or something yeah. like that. So it, it goes both ways, but it's, I like to call it the assessment ecosystem, right? So stamp is an important part of that ecosystem it's not the only important piece of information. You have to look at it, it's all interconnected, right? Yes. You have to look at their quiz scores. You gotta look at their standardized scores in, uh, in the English and so forth. But you put that all together and you can get a full profile of a kid and I think stamps an important part of that, don't you? Yes, and yeah. proficiency and real communication should be an important piece right. of every immersion program, and that's what we can help with. Right, right. And you know, I, I had a, an interesting comment from an immersion teacher who was really concerned about her program, and she happened to be Spanish, and she said, you know, I know that we're, our, our, we're teaching our kids immersion. I worry that we're not teaching them Spanish. And what she meant was they had the classroom language 
where, you know, can I go to the bathroom, open your book to page 47, uh, you know, what's the neck, what's the homework assignment, they had all that language. But if you drop them in Madrid or Buenos Aires or something, they wouldn't know how to say, you know, here's what I liked. I like to play soccer. Want to go play soccer? They wouldn't have that social kind of language, which is maybe okay in the beginning of an immersion program, but you get to middle school, high school, closer to graduation, you probably want the kid to be able to go out in the world and interact with people, yeah. right? So the STEM score might be a good opportunity for the teacher in the immersion program to reflect about how much value they're yeah. giving to real yeah. communication. Exactly. And you know, we, we can help with that um, here at Avant. We've got a, a, a new initiative uh, called MORE. And it's really a professional development, sort of a consulting service that uh, Don Samples is heading up. So you can give us a call, and if you want some help in how do I look at this data in the context of all this other information I have about the kid, how do I maybe redirect the purpose of our program a little bit if you're concerned about that social language piece. So go to the website and look up more learning. And that's a resource where we can help out on this question. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for yeah. touching on that topic. And it's great. we hope it's helpful for you.